Welcome to Real Talk with Sean, everybody. My guest is Shauna. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> and Shauna has eczema, so we're going to be discussing that today. Um, and I want to thank you so much for joining me. And I want to let you know that uh, I think that you are a very strong woman to be able to put your face out there and show everybody what it's like um, to deal with the daily struggles of eczema. What is eczema? Um, from what I know growing up, um, it's a skin condition. Um, they have triggers like allergens, um, maybe your food diet, like what you eat, um, the environment, things like that will be a factor that would trigger off a flare with like a rash. And the rashes are usually like in your neck, your joint, um, right here and in the back of your leg. You might get a little bit on your stomach and your back or something like a little heat rash. Um, and that's about it. Does it itch or does it hurt? Um, so yeah, when it's when it's when the triggers come, it becomes itchy first. Like you will have a clear skin and then it'll just be just start being itchy, and then you'll see a rash. Mm -hmm. And then it'll either you gotta take care of it or it'll get worse if you don't take care of it. Wow. And so what do you do to take care of it? Like, what is your regimen that you use to take care of it? I don't have eczema right now. Well, that's not what I'm suffering from right now. Mm -hmm. I'm suffering from something called topical. It's like, oh, me. Um, you know, it was a lot of stress for her. I heard my mom was really stressed out about it. She used to cry a lot because, you know, basically you can't stop the, the irritation for your child. So you feel hopeless. Um, but she used to do the oatmeal baths. Um, I guess she used to just cream the crap out of my skin, like moisturize it real good. And of course, I'm guessing she would listen to the doctors and use the steroid creams that they would um, give us. So that was how, like, you know, growing up, my skin was overall, like, cleared up. Like, it wasn't bad. I remember my mom doing stuff like yogurt um, detoxes. Like, we put yogurt all over our body, like Greek yogurt, and just put it all over our body and just sit there for, like, 20 minutes and then wash it off. Like just, you know, like for probiotics and stuff like that. So my mom definitely tried, you know, regimen for the topical part of it. So then when I got older and my mom wasn't like really responsible for me anymore, I would just go to the doctor. They would give me like Triamcinolone. Those were the ointment steroids that they would give me. Um, I think it was another one that starts with a B and I would use them on my joints. Like whenever they would come, the breakout would come, I would just use it on my joints in my areas and then they'll go away. So I didn't mm -hmm. have, um, I didn't have like, growing again, oh, that didn't really have really bad eczema. It came bad, bad though. Um, and mm -hmm. I think about 2014 because something really like traumatic happened in my life. I was really stressed. I was an adult now. And I had to do everything for myself. I wasn't used to that. And then I was going mm -hmm. through stuff with my mom with my son. So my skin broke out. It, was, it got really bad. So I think this was my first symptoms of topical steroid withdrawal because it came like, it went like all over my body. It was like my face was affected. My whole like arms were affected. My leg, all over my bottom of my leg were affected. I had to like, they used steroids again, the doctors, dermatologists, to um, clear it up, and I used something called ammonium lactate on the on the leg, but I didn't, I wasn't aware of topical steroids until mm -hmm. right now, it's about a few months now because of TikTok. So I was like, you know, I was so happy that it cleared up, but I wasn't confident anymore because it started my legs a lot. So okay. my daughter's father, you know, we met, and you know, he basically like made me more confident. You know, like you just feel better mm -hmm. when you have somebody because you feel like. I don't have to hide myself anymore because somebody yeah. loves me. So, you know, I just was more confident. I used to show Absolutely. my legs more, even though they were scarred up and stuff like that. And that the sun allowed it to naturally just clear up over time. And I guess shea butter. And I used some black raw soap as well for the scars. So, you know, that was in 2014. So, um, you know, grown, after that, I haven't had really issues with my eczema because I did mm -hmm. intermittent fasting. 
I got into Dr. Sebi, like a holistic living, oh, like yeah. herbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the alkaline herbs. And um, I was working at a farm um, in college, um, King Girl Community Urban Farm. Um, and we did a lot of the fruits and vegetables. They, that's the only thing that they had at the farm were fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables. So that was basically what I did. So that allowed me to eat more healthier. It, wanted me, it made me want to eat more healthier. Mm -hmm. um, it got me into more healthier, like, um, like ways of living. Um, and, it, and it made me stay healthier. But and it was crazy because I was working at Buffalo Wild Wings and I was still eating the fried chicken and stuff like that. But I was balancing it out. Like I was right. like eating salads and fruits and I was just balancing it out. So it was really, really good. But then I went to the shelter. I was in the shelter for three years. I think mm -hmm. that trauma and the things mm -hmm. that I went through there you don't get no freedom. You don't get no privacy. They got the mice. They got the pests. They got to keep moving me around, relocating me. I'm in college at the time. I'm working at the time. It was so stressful. I got a bachelor's right. degree from John Jay College. Good job. Um, good job. Thank you. Proud of you. It was. Thank you so much. But it was so hard because you know you being in the shelter. But it, I think it took a toll on my body. So I think that that was what like kind of like allowed. My, my immune system to talk, kind of be like compromised. So okay. like it would it allow that whatever damage the steroids could have done to me, like the nerve, because it's supposed to be now that topical steroid withdrawal causes nerve damage. So like you know, right let's, now- Let's back up, let's back up real quick for everybody else. What is, I can speculate what it is, but what is topical steroid withdrawal? Right. So I'm now learning about it. Mm -hmm. So topical steroid withdrawal is basically your body withdrawing from steroids, topical right. steroids. It right. could be oral steroids or topical steroids. Now, what the steroids do, and you can look this up because I was, I'm was i now reading into it too, like um, steroid withdrawal in general. It causes nerve damage because it is it's suppressing the... Um, the symptoms and it's yep. putting it back inside your body. So I guess whatever exactly. it does is damaging the nerves. So now when it breaks out and the, like when the inflammation, I guess when the trigger comes and the flare up comes and it and it causes this breakout that happens to us for the top of the jaw, it goes exactly where our veins are. So like if you look at where the veins are, they're like my Facebook are right here. You can see it over right here, over right yeah. here. Like yeah. this is like where the veins are. My mm -hmm. hands, they, these are where the veins are. So the messed up part is I think you saw a lot of my videos. I've been doing mm -hmm. well. Like I've been going to phototherapy. Um, I'm 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 holistic. I'm vegetarian now. Good. I have a tea line um called KB's Alkaline Tea. So we do like um teas for everything, moods and conditions. But see, I never knew about drug withdrawal. So I will have to now make an, another tea now for drug withdrawal. But it's like because of this flare up. It's like, I don't even like to talk about it, but my skin is shedding. So because it's so dry, mm -hmm. um, it sheds a lot. But to me, what happened was recently, because I found out about topical steroid withdrawal, mm -hmm. it's also called red, red skin syndrome. Because we brown skin, I think that it don't show. What is it called? Red skin syndrome. Is that the RS? RBS. Um, Yes, I heard you talking about that, and I was going to ask you what that was. Okay, so go it's ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Thing. It's the same thing. Basically, it's just another name for it. So basically, okay. um, I was like, I told my doctors, I didn't want to say steroid because I didn't want to like cause an argument with these people. Mm -hmm. So I went to the doctors, and I was like, um, this is not eczema. Like I've been going to you guys for a year now for phototherapy for eczema, and I just had another flare up, and my flare up was my eyes were swollen, my face was oozing, you know, stuff like that. This is not, this is not, um, this is not eczema anymore. This is something else. And I was like, I think that this is um, red skin syndrome. Mm -hmm. So they were like, oh, you know, well, well, we don't, they weren't denying what it was because they don't mm -hmm. recognize it in America. That's the issue. They only recognize it in Europe. This is what I'm reading up on. They only recognize it in Europe and in Japan. I think it's somewhere else, but not in America. So, Why is, is it not? Is it because it's not 
typically known to happen to African Americans, or is it um, what is the reason that you're saying they don't acknowledge it in America if it's a I real thing? I think it thing? would be a lawsuit, a class action settlement. It would okay. be some type of funding needed because um, you is you're giving us these um, products, you know, like mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. They're giving us these products, and it's making us go through these things. Like it's, it's side effects. So you went from me. eczema, you went from having eczema, treating the eczema as your mother saw fit and, and it was working. It kept you soothed and it kept you uh, being able to, you know, be a child, um, stopping and the itchiness. Life, right. And you went to the topical steroids and this is where things have progressed. Right. Am I correct? Okay. Right. Wow. Now, is there a such thing as chronic eczema? So that's like, what I thought for a long time that that was okay. what I had. I thought that I had, um, I thought I had chronic eczema. So this is why I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I'm kind of like you know it was horrible because as a holistic person I know how to heal. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to fast. I was trying to do everything, and I wasn't doing it completely because I wasn't seeing no kind of results, like no right. kind of changes in my body. It was like. This isn't working either. So I, it was breaking me down mentally because it was of like, course. you know, I want to, I'm, I'm holistic. I'm so healthy. Like I was doing all my skin teas, you know, it worked at one point. Like it was, mm -hmm. it worked, but then it came back 10 times worse because I kept using the steroids because I wasn't aware that right. that was the issue. Right. I would, and the thing about it, I was doing a small like potency, like hydrocortisone, like mm -hmm. um, over-the-counter stuff, like little simple things. This is why it's so severe because people don't think that that cannot lead to this, but it can. Hydrocortisone. So hydrocortisone, and you feel that that was you feel that that was a part in it becoming what it has um, become now. The hydrocortisone. Um, Everything. Because that's a topical steroid, of course. Every, every kind of steroid. So at that time. Wow. Um, my skin was doing real good. I was doing like steam baths and then I was doing my exfoliation with some rich hazel or some rose water. Then I would moisturize the heck out my skin and go out in the sun and just do that every day, drink a gallon of water a day. And it was in a clip. And then I would go to like different states. So this is when it was the pandemic and everything was shut down in New York. And it was so cold certain times. So I would go on different states where it was nice, good air, like Atlanta, you know, stuff like that. And that was where... I was um, able to see a difference in my skin. And then this was October, 2020. So the weather makes a difference. The environment, everything to me can help. You live with it. So you okay. know what helps you at least. So that yeah. does, wow. It makes a difference. And you know, because people, it's, it's the vibe, the energy, it's everything, yeah. you know, just getting away All from of it own. together. All of yeah. it together as a whole. It's a help, it helps with you mentally too. Like, you know, just of getting course. away from that negative energy. Cause you know, the pandemic made everything really negative, yeah, you know, yeah. in New York, especially because everything was locked down. So mentally, mental illness was a factor and, really you know, true. people were just acting out on it. And the fact that mm -hmm. I have a little baby and I'm always with my daughter, they were looking at me like, why the hell you got this baby outside? But I have to have this baby outside. She's my right. child. She's, she has to be with me. So laundry, essential needs, everything mm -hmm. like that she has to be with me so these people were like basically you know just being really making me really uncomfortable and then my skin was uncomfortable so it was like I gotta get out of here so when I went away that it was it cleared my skin up but I live in a project so the heat mm -hmm. is super hot so I went to sleep for two nights and scratched my skin off and uh, I woke up and my skin was damaged okay. so I was bedridden kind of thing this this happens to everybody with the top of the table job and the crazy part is, I think I went through that too because the doctors, when I wasn't getting no ointment, I wasn't like stressing about it. I was, my skin was coming up anyway. So I wasn't looking for no ointment. But I went, but they were giving me little small tools and it, they weren't working. And I kept telling the doctors that these aren't working, these aren't working. So I kept using a hydrocortisone and I guess I ran out and I must have slept one night and I was scratching and I woke up, my skin was damaged all the way. I went to the doctors. They gave me more steroids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, at this time, at this time, you were still using them because you had not yeah, gotten to where know. you are now. Right. I right. didn't know. Right. So I'm just exactly. using more steroids and I'm just like, all right. 
So now they're not helping me. Nothing. This is not working. They not, they they not giving me a higher potency. I got to get out of here. So now I went to another dermatologist now, and they have something called phototherapy. So I'm gonna stop you real quick. I see you. I'm a, I see you, and I didn't mean to cut you off. I see you. That if it, so, it really bothers you. The itching. Does, does it itch? Um. Is that so what you're experiencing? Itching, the itching, right? Is a nerve mm. thing. This is what they're telling us. Okay. It's called nerve. Fingers. Like where my nerves are is probably where it will be a little itch. But to me, I don't know how to feel about that part because okay. my skin to me, when it's itchy, is more or less when it's healing. Like when it's like, like yeah. my body's talking to me. Like I, because I'm really there still on my body. So it's like a, it's like basically it's exfoliating. Because right now I've been doing bleach baths for the past like four days. I think I need to stop doing so many because I'm like it's getting better now. So I gotta chill out with it. What is but a bleach bath? I'll, I'll put a cap full of bleach uh -huh. in a bath and sit my butt in it for 10 minutes. And what does that, what is, what is that good for? Um, remember, cause I'm, because my skin is shedding, it like exfoliates all of it. And right now my skin was like dry and brittle. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was like weak and, but dry. So imagine scratching something like that. That was horrible. Oh, okay, right. And Rich Hazel was get, was becoming too strong for it. So I'm like, oh my God, what to do? So I found out about some saline solutions, which is like, you know, sea salt. I put it in some, um, in some water in a um, spray bottle and, I'm, and yeah. I'll be putting it on my wound. Okay. That is helping tremendously with the like uh, discomfort of the like, oh my God, it's open or whatever. It's dry. Or, like, because my face starts to swell up and tighten when it's dry. And it's so... This thing is so weird. Like, you, I had to put heat covers in my apartment. I have to have the AC on sometimes. If it's too cold, it'll irritate me. If it's too hot, my skin will um, start to swell up. It was like, I haven't had a flare up like this, though, since, like, last year, April. That's why I'm so distraught this time. Like, I have not been on, on TikTok for the past, like, two weeks because I don't, I didn't feel like talking about it. I don't like where I was. I was so like depressed. I, I, I live in a party, so I like they had roaches in the building. So I keep my house extra, extra clean. Like, because my skin right. is shedding and I have anxiety, I like right. to sweep 10 times more, especially because right now it's so dry. Because, right, yeah. usually like the shedding thing is not an issue for me because of the phototherapy. Like, the phototherapy is helping. This is why this is so crazy to me. This is why I had, I really had to diagnose myself correctly. This, this yeah. is why this is. So important that I had eczema, but now I have topical steroid withdrawal because if I would not have seen like, yo, this got to be what these, because I've seen it on TikTok. I've seen everybody right. that had it. I'm like, this got to be what these people got because that's the only thing that's keeping me back from fully healing, stopping these steroids completely. So you the still use time, them. So when, when was the last time you used a steroid? Thank God, three months ago. But my hydrocortisone two point oh for my face, I used about a month and a half ago. So okay. this is to me in my mind, this is the yeah. complete withdrawal right here that's happening. Right. But I would thank God to say, knock on wood, it was it's it's been it was it's been rough, but it's not the, as rough it, as it was. Thank you, God. Good. Um, November twenty twenty because I thought I I couldn't move. I needed I needed help. My daughter's father had to come in the house. And, and take over because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't cook for her. I couldn't do anything. I felt like the worst person in the world. Why? So, Why? Was you, were you in pain? What you mean mentally or both and, and or pain, physically? Uh, oh my God, because it was winter time. You know, so eczema naturally, my skin is dry. It was so dry. Nothing, they, they tell you like with the topical steroid withdrawal, like when the first phases, a lot of the times, no, nothing moisturizes your skin. So nothing was moisturizing my skin. So I would put Vaseline on my skin. And two, about 10 minutes later, my skin is back dry. My skin was so thin. It was so horrible. And nobody was helping me. So the phototherapy was the only thing that was getting my skin back to normal. So right now, my skin looks crazy in the um in this camera for some reason. But I'm looking at it in this other camera. I'm going to uh, lie to mine. Okay. So, um, it just looked crazy in this camera. But it's right now, to me, my face, I'm going to talk about it. Like, you can see, like, this is all the rest skin yeah. syndrome stuff. Mm -hmm. It looks good though, yeah. honestly. From here, from here, I know what you're looking at may be different, but from what I'm seeing on you, it does not look bad. 
You know, it does not look, yeah, yeah. It it just looks discolored. And that's that's the point. Yeah, I see the color. Yeah, I see the color. Therapy is going to clear that crap up right there. It's going to even it out. Oh, that's what's up. UVB rays, which is the, you know, faking the sun. Yeah. But it's it's, it's being monitored. It's being, you know, timed, observed, and and noted. So that's good for healing. You know how long you've been doing it, how long you're exposing your body for so on and so forth. So now they're giving me Dupixin. I know you heard of Dupixin before. Uh, heck no. Commercials and stuff. <laughs> what is Dupixin? Dupixin is supposed to be a biological drug and it's not okay. a steroid. And basically it's supposed to suppress something in my immune system, right? So I'm going to use it for a time and then I'm going to, you know, get back to my, you know, natural regimen once I'm back on my feet. Because basically my right con- now- My, my yeah. concern with the suppression is right. will it, and this is of course for you to look up, but will it suppress it and it possibly could come back worse, whatever they're going to suppress? Um, okay. That would be, that. that's a question that I would want to know because now, you know, you're already going through that with this, time, this steroid. Right. So, right. you know, giving you something else when, when they're using the word suppress, I understand because it helps you, you know, be comfortable. But what happens when it's not being suppressed? Is it going to be worse? So I looked into it. I was reading up on it. I read up on photo. Like I went, like people are really like discussing this. People that's in America, even though it's not being um, recognized in America, people are talking about TSW and Dupixin. So I was looking into it and they were like, um, you know, basically, I've been doing the Dupixin, it's clearing it up. I'm still shutting five months later after starting it, but um, I'm not bedridden anymore. I'm much better than it was another okay. person. And she, they were like, um, that they're doing better, but they're weaning off the, off the Dupixin. They're not completely off of it yet, but they are living their best life. Oh, this, wow, that, good. and the third. So, so good I, things from both people. Yeah, these that are you, like yeah. that you've looked up. Oh, that you've come in ca- contact with, or that you uh, looked up. You had they were both part. They were both positive. The one yeah, that was being weaned off, and the one that was still on. Right, and these people. Well, I don't know about the one for the five months. I don't know. I didn't know her continued story, so I would probably check okay. try to see if I could find out. Yeah. Um, but these people aren't doing phototherapy like me. Phototherapy is to me even more major to me to do because it helps with eczema as well. So. Because, you know, we the people of the sun. So, like, melanated people. I mean, it helps sun help, mm-hmm. help right. heal everybody. Mm-hmm. But it will rarely work wonder, wonder on our skin, like the yes, sun. So, that's why we had to mimic it. Because, you know, in New York, we get winter time, And it gets mm-hmm. real, real cold out here. So, that takes away from that sun that I need in the winter time And stuff like that. And I'm, I'm from the islands, naturally. My mom is from Barbados. And my father's from Barbados. So, it's like, we need the sun. And I don't be getting as much sun as right. I need. So I'm, I'm vitamin D deficient. So we have to do something about that so that my body's skin immune system can build up. Because I think that my immune system inside is healthy. That's why mentally I'm still able to keep pushing. But, That's good. you know, physically, I think that my skin is not as strong as my immune system because of the right. environment that I'm in. And that's the honest truth. We, we already discussed that. My skin thrives in a in a healthier environment. Air-wise. But that makes so much sense, though. I think that it makes does. sense for yeah. for people that have eczema. Um, of course, I do know a, quite a bit of people, uh, specifically children, where you notice it more, unless I guess it's on a on a bad side or a worse side. I don't know. I don't know the spectrum of it, but I know some kids grow out of it where you can look at them and can't even tell. And then right. you see some where you can look at their skin and know that they still suffer with it. And I've always thought that a person had to be extra clean, but I did not know all of the other things that entail that it entailed, like you're discussing. And I think it's very good that you're on here doing this because you're mentioning things that someone else may be going through, just like you were, and you started to educate yourself more because you wanted to be better. So, wow. and I, I heard you mention that earlier that it affected your mental. Yes. What, what how did it affect you, that? I'm trying to get social security because, you know, I have a bachelor's degree. I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm, I'm, I have my own apartment. You know, I'm the, I have good credit. I'm the, I'm the 
head of household. Like I gotta do everything. I'm the one that needs to be cooking, right. cleaning, working. And you gotta be and right up here in the mind. You know, to do those things. You gotta be mentally good. Right. And and imagine now that like, every time you walk, your skin is shedding. And now you gotta have it. I have anxiety naturally for trauma. I gotta think about, oh my God, my skin. Like I wanna wear something where my skin is not gonna keep like falling off everywhere because I don't want to cook and it's my skin is on my yo and it's like I've I've figured it out about keeping my skin moisturized putting on gloves you know like I just I do I still like cook a little funny like you know away from it like, <laughs> like this, right. You know? right you know to get my anxiety okay I sleep yeah. a lot you know I keep my house super super clean you know yeah. these are the things that help me alleviate that mind where my mind is going crazy so people think in my apartment building that I'm probably crazy because I'm super on top of listen the house gotta stay clean because when I shut down I'm a damn because I work so hard and my skin is healing at the same time I'm overworking myself so you mentally know, well you said that now, now you heard yourself say that, that you're overworking yourself. Myself. But I have yeah. to, because like the mental health about it part is, mm -hmm. is the, it depresses you. So imagine you okay. feeling so down. You're not going to okay. want to get up. You're not going to want to, huh? No, I said, of course, you're right. You're not going to want to get up. You're not going to want to, um, you're not going to want to do anything. You ain't going to want to do anything for yourself. And that don't somebody else. And I got to do something for every, somebody else. So it's like, I had to just, I have to put myself up every day, every day. You know, people talk about, you know, when the bed, you got to shed with the bed and the shedding because my shedding is bad right now. I'm telling you, usually I don't have to go through these things. Like I love big, a big, like what I have to do it now, right now for the past mm -hmm. two weeks. I haven't dealt with this in a long time. Because of this flare up and the, and the dryness and the shedding right mm -hmm. now, it's been like the toll of getting up, having to like dust off my bed, having to lint, I'm using the lint brush to get it off. People mm -hmm. are like, the people that got the money, because I ain't got the money, I got to go buy me a vacuum, though. Vacuums, mm -hmm. the little small ones, they use a vacuum to do that stuff mm -hmm. every single day, because mentally, well, who's going to see back in some skin tonight, so from yesterday? I'm not doing that. Your anxiety is <laughs> Right, right, You know right, what I'm right. Like, it's so <laughs> disgusting. And then, you know, to even tell people, like, so relationships is bad for me, you know, friendships are not that good for me, because... When I'm shutting like that, you've got to stay away from me because I'm extra, like, ugh, and I'm like, I don't But it's not to... them, but it's not them. It's more it's you. Not them. It's not them. It's not them at all. And, and I, you know what it is, though? It becomes them, though, because I tell, I, I'm super, like, see, I'm- a, Because I'm you crazy. make it, because you make them aware of it. Yeah. You I do it. To, you see it. You can't hide it. It's on my hands and stuff. So I was like- But I, they I know. Try. But they know. I think it's more you being conscious because you, you know, nobody, you know, I wouldn't lie, I wouldn't like that. And then the fact that you're very, very neat and clean and you see the skin coming off, it it uh, it still affects you mentally. Yeah. So you kind of, instead of, instead of, I feel, this is what I feel, instead of you giving somebody a chance to talk about you or say something, you do it. You do right. it. And, and that way, I'm, I'm, I'm already talking about myself to let you know. And then in turn, you yeah, and you probably push them away a little bit when really they know you can't control this. This is nothing right. that you can control and you do all you can to control it. I advise you to let people be there for you. You know, the good ones. You know, right. I mean, some people, you know, they fake as hell. Yeah, but but know, the good I'm, I'm not getting no good ones right now. I guess because I'm so okay. okay. days. So I'm not going to blame it on them. I'm going to blame it on yeah. what I'm going through my skin condition. I would say yes. sometimes I do blame it on people when they overstep boundaries like if I want I to stay understand that with my friends and my family because I'm I, it's just so rough for me I don't want to talk about it give me my space I respect Please. that I can you know understand that. that it gets really hard for me to like that is true somebody because it is like, so true they're not they're not trying to help so I gotta hide it from everybody because I don't want nobody to talk about me like crazy crazy but at this point I can't hide it no more I'm going through topical steroid withdrawal um, and you're doing a damn good job being a spokesperson for it because I watch you. It's going to be a roller coaster because guess what? If it wasn't eczema or um, R, R, is it R, S, V? Red skin syndrome. Yeah. If it wasn't that, it would be something else. 
It, it would right. be something else because life just does that to us, unfortunately. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I think that you're doing a good job handling yourself, speaking about it, because that helps. And you're being, even though you may have times where you're weak, somebody else is weaker because they're the ones that's not in front of the camera. They actually at home doing this all alone. I'm very proud of you for doing what you're doing, um, seriously. It, because like I said, even though you struggle with your own mental, which I definitely can understand because I know I would, because I mean, we all worry about what other people think, even if we say we don't, you know, we do. We like, oh shit, if this, is this showing? Because I can imagine it's your skin. So the fact that you're being on the forefront and standing up, I'm mm -hmm. proud of you. Very. Yeah. Yeah. I look crazy to me right now. So what I like to do before I found out it was topical steroid withdrawal to stop, because the last time I had a flare up was about three months ago. And the only time I usually get flare ups is when I'm slowing down on the phototherapy because it's like basically like even not my skin back to normal. And it's like, you slowing that down, girl, you're not going to break out on you because what are you doing? That's what my skin mm -hmm. be trying to say to me if I think about it. <laughs> so, um, I do meditation. Meditation helps a lot. So mental health, regardless of, um, regardless of if it helps with my skin, it's helping mm -hmm. my mental health. Meditation. Like, I believe they go together. I believe the two work. They work in unison. Uh, no, uh, the physical and the mental. I believe they work in unison. Right. Your, your body can also feed off what your mind tells it. So right. I do believe the meditation and all of that can help with even your skin to me. And I say stuff to my, I do affirmations in my head. I do a lot of affirmations. Like, um, what do I say? Skin, you are healing. Skin, you are healed. Now I'm adding nerves, you are healing. You nerves, you are healed. Um, I do stuff like, you know, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. I'm like, beautiful. Absolutely. You no, know, because, you know, every time when I'm looking at myself and I don't recognize myself, I just thought, mm -hmm. like right now my mouth is so like tight because mm -hmm. it's drying up, right? So I can't mm -hmm. smile like, I look, right. look mad funny when I'm falling. But I would look at myself in the mirror and be like, you're beautiful, girl. Yeah, exactly. No, right now, I don't even look like... <laughs> But you do, you know, but see, the thing is, is that, that that doesn't take the beauty away. That's just something you're going through with, with what you, right. the skin, the skin disease right. that you have, that has nothing to do with the beauty of who you are and yeah, your face. Times when this thing made me look so ugly, like when I went okay. out to California, I had some pictures okay. of my face so dry. There are, okay. you have this, like, I guess, I guess, I don't know, but like, maybe you will probably get one more interview with a person mm -hmm. straight with topical standard of jaw. They mm -hmm. have like red, like this had the list lady. She had like, like I'm talking about like a red shirt. Her face was red. Wow. Her whole her forehead was red, mm -hmm. like from this thing. This thing, they got a, they got a, they got a lot of things. They got a documentary. So you've before. seen it worse. You've yeah, seen no, it worse. Yours is yours is nothing compared to what you have seen. I guess it's not. It, it don't look bad because I'm not like white. If white people in the it looks like whoa, but black people it look bad too because we look gray, we look dry, yeah. We look dry. Dark. Yeah, that's what I know. The dry, the 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 alligator look, the dry. The dry. Like this, we, yeah. oh, they call us um elephant skin. That's a part that's of the it. um. That's the one elephant skin. That's what it yeah, is that I was thinking skin, of. Yeah, that's a part of the um topical steroid withdrawal symptoms. Um, all that I had, a, I had that I had it on my leg. My skin was raw. It was real, real bad. And I guess I wasn't taking pictures, but I do have a, bit, I do have that one little clip where I show that my face was swollen and, and you know stuff like that. So it did look bad, but people, you know, people's faces probably did look worse. And there's people that have been going through this topical of steroid withdrawal for five years, and I don't understand how that's possible. Wow, for five and years. A, um, a child has died from this. Um, somebody committed suicide the other day. From topical steroid withdrawal. Somebody committed suicide. Wow. This is a lot. You know, like, imagine, like, I've been going through the shedding process for two years. But like I said, some day, some weeks, I got some weeks where my skin is not really shedding at all. It only shed like after like six hours of being around, moving around, all around, you know what I'm saying? Having on the same clothes. Then I That's feel part like of the clothes. disease. That's part of it, the shedding. Yes, the shedding. Uh, okay, it's shedding, okay. Like, it's been shedding so much. Okay. And, and imagine like, 
your skin flaring up. You, you don't know what to do. Like, you don't know if you should eat this. You don't know what to do to help it. You feel like nothing's working. Sometimes, you know, what's messed up? People don't have insurance. They're not mm-hmm. giving people insurance. You know, it's, all, it's everybody's different with how they're going through this. Right. That's why, you know, I just really feel bad for those people. But I've been like, I've been, I, because of this, I've been researching stuff like Balmans. Balmans is like a skincare company. Mm-hmm. They got like creams and stuff, but they talk about the stories about people that got TSW mm-hmm. um, and their testimonies. Um, then they got something they, like um, the, the ITSAN, I-T-S-A-N. Mm-hmm. It's a like group that they like formed about, about TSW. Mm-hmm. to like help us about like tips that that work for people and didn't work for people so um i definitely looked into those so that kind of helped me because that's how i learned about the saline solution um and i've been wrapping my skin when i'm sleeping because the reason why my face even got this bad to me is because i didn't wrap it like i was wrapping it but before that i was rubbing it when i'm sleeping so because i'm rubbing it i'm i'm probably like rubbing my skin off because of how like yeah. That's the skin in that and you don't notice it in your sleep. I'm pretty sure. Right. So you wrap. So the wrapping helps you, of course, not to scratch. Yeah. Wow. And because you literally my, my thing, my hands too. So you can't scratch yourself. Mm-hmm. And this is it's, more recent. I only been doing it for like a week. So so um, I'm assuming that when you scratch yourself, of course, you wake up the next day and you are completely blistered. Right. Wow. And like you said, like you said, because of the eczema, the skin layer is very thin. So what I'm assuming is that with the eczema, your skin dries up. And of course, our skin is thick. It's a thick layer of skin. But as it dries up and you're shedding, that thick layer of skin is falling off, of course, which leaves you with this, the thin layer of skin. When you scratch it, it's not like a normal scratch. They say our scratch is considered the bone deep. Like because of the nerves, yeah, it's under the skin. Exactly. That's what we scratch it for. That nerve. Exactly. That's why the scratches are so, like you said, bone. Would you say bone deep? Mm-hmm. That is. It makes sense though. Uh, it, it logically makes sense because mm-hmm. of the dryness and the skin falling off. Is is it is eczema genetic? They try to say it's genetic. My mom has it. For me, I'm holistic. So I think that, and I don't want to get nobody upset. That's on them. That's their problem. You can always turn if you don't want to listen. (laughs) What you say? I think immunizations are immunizations and what we eat. Yeah. And what we eat are genetic. We follow what what my mother did and we follow Mm -hmm. what they told us to do. I say that about a lot of stuff. So I completely agree with that. My son. I gave him the shots because I, I was 18 years old when I had him. Mm-hmm. I didn't do the research I did now. My daughter, she has no shots. She got one shot because one time a big situation happened. She was forced to get him. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. But um, she was forced to. So she got mm-hmm. one dose of the all the shots that they get them. But yeah. she's going to be five this year. Knock on wood. Grab Hasn't been sick child. at all. Grab your healthy child. You know what I'm saying? And she don't get them shots. I, I do agree with that. Listen, so, I mean, anybody else that don't want to hear, like I said, you're always welcome to hit the fast forward or stop, you know, <laughs> but I do agree with that. And the reason why I'm saying it is because my son now, he has the eczema, the allergies. Wow. And the asthma, like well, me and my mother. Two and two together. I mean, two and two, two plus and two makes four. Got it. Right. She so, I mean, anything. it does make sense. It would make you think about that. And I mean, we do get all of these shots and, and, and um, with the vaccines that they say we need that they, whoever they are, they say right. we need these things. Um, so I can, I can understand that. And so, we're, we're looking at the, um, the steroids, everybody that's going through this heals differently. It affects us differently, et cetera, et cetera. So there's no side, there's no one size fits all medication for anybody. That's so true. same thing with immunization. So blood types, it affects each of our blood types differently. That is gen- the genetic history. I mean, comparison to me, like the fact that we will have the same blood type and we do similar diet 
similar way of living and similar procedures, like medical procedures, like listening to our doctors, doing what they tell us to do, et cetera, et cetera. Because we think that they are telling them what's best for us because they are doctors. They're the doctors, so of course. But I'm, I'm glad my biggest thing is that you can listen to them, but at a certain point, we have to educate ourselves. And I see that that's what you started to do is educate yourself. See what yeah. other people are experiencing, what they've done, especially from a holistic side, because that's something that can't hurt. It's not like mm -hmm. you're going out asking the doctor to prescribe you this. You're looking at a natural way now. The Most High has put things on this earth for us to use mm -hmm. those things, but we've gotten away from it. And we allow the man to tell us that we need these vaccines and you need to take this medicine. And mm -hmm. as you're seeing for yourself right now, that topical steroid has caused another problem. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like the topical steroid helped one thing and started another thing? Absolutely. And that's what drugs do. That's why yep. I'm nervous because this topical steroid drug kind of messes with my cataracts, right? Mm -hmm. Then they're going to tell me to do Pixin for cause some type of eye issue. So I think mm -hmm. I'm going to be blind at the end of this. Off of bed. But we are not, not going to speak that into existence. No, the right. heck you're not. <laughs> right. And then, so now, and then, you know, I'm so mad I have to take the Pixin. But the fact that I cannot get this thing in control by myself, mm -hmm. I got to go with, use this for a second and mm -hmm. then build myself back up. Like the person that I am, like I kind of lost that person too. Like, I'm the green juice mommy, salad mommy. You know, mm -hmm. I want to make my own dressings from scratch. I, mm -hmm. I fell off because of the skin condition. I got to get back up. I got to stop all this shedding, all this. My skin is hurting or my hands are hurting. All of that got to stop so I can get back to the health way of life for myself. And then I feel like that will stop the triggers and the flare ups because it'll be like, I'll feel like, okay, you drinking too much. You having too much sugar. Cut it out. You know, you have too much yeast, too much bread, cheese, anything. Cut it out. Anything in excess. Anything in excess yes. is too much. Too much. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I, but I, I think that I think that what you just said is a big deal. The fact some people, when they're in that space, they don't even know that they need to pull themselves up by the, you know, by the collar and get it back together. Let's get because mm -hmm. when we're in that, when we're in that mode. We don't see no light at the end of the tunnel, you know, but the mm -hmm. fact that you see the light, like you see it because you're sitting right here saying it, I need to get myself back up and get to, you're already on your way. You mm -hmm. just need, you know what I'm saying? You're already there. You're already on the path. You just need to start mm -hmm. walking. You're standing right there looking. You just yeah. need to take a step. So I mean, before I let you go, because I think this is very important. Um, everything that you just said, I know for a fact that some people are going to look at this and be like, oh my God. Like, I need to go research this and start to look at this right. or read this. Right. Where can everybody follow you? I think the best place to find me and get all my information is two places. My Instagram for my business page, KB's Alkaline T. So it's KBS Alkaline T. Um, and for Y'all better know how to spell alkaline. Learn how to spell alkaline if you don't Google it. <laughs> A-L-K-A-L-I-N. For the people that don't got Google. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then um, my TikTok, uh, my first and last name, Shanna, S-H-A-N-N-A-K-I-D-D, -D, um, 959. I don't know why those are the numbers. I'm going to look them up too. But I like numerology. Yes. But um, 959. And um. That's basically where I'm, that's where I'm talking about my skin journey. I'm talking about what's going on, how I'm feeling. I'm, I'm dancing. I'm, I'm, I'm doing healthy stuff. Um, I'm talking about my teeth. I'm just doing, that's where there's no niche. That's just me, my life, and you're going to get it all there. So. The raw, the raw. Oh, well, y'all, yeah. follow, follow. It's Shana. Shana. Shanna, and I pronounced it wrong in the beginning. So I apologize, Shanna. We're just okay. meeting y'all. Yeah, so I want, I'm, you already know I'm following you. Everybody else follow Shanna, support her with her tea. You know, she's very positive. I've been watching. I wouldn't even have reached out if she wasn't positive. So, you know, like I said, I'm proud of you. And I have one last question before I let you go. Okay. Will you promise me to always spread peace and love in this world? 
This has been hard for me, especially in Brooklyn, New York. But because I met you, and I think that this is a great experience. Thank you. I promise to always spread. And I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you.